It's almost fall up here in the Northern Hemisphere and there's nothing I want to do more than get out and shoot some of it. So today, we're heading into the field and doing some large format meditation. Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Marash, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, here's a playlist of our entire second season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, I'm showing you something new in the world of large format photography. We're not doing anything super educational this week, but I did want to share with you a trip I made yesterday morning up to Mohican State Park here in Ohio. It's a hop, skip, and a jump away from Columbus. I had to get up super early to do it, but I was really happy that I did. It was just one of those, I, I'm looking at the weather forecast, I was also writing scripts for future LFFs and looking through the topics, and I said, you know what? I just gotta get out there and shoot. It's a delicate balance creating content. You wanna deliver something consistently, but you also wanna do some stuff for yourself. And I really don't want producing stuff for this channel to get in the way of what I like to do. I wanna try and combine it as much as possible. So hopefully there's something you can get out of today's, today's little journey up to Mohican, and let me know what you think. Well, the fog isn't as thick as I wanted it this morning, but we have some small patches rolling in through the trees. So to see a little bit further into the distance, we're gonna use our longer lens. I'm gonna throw the 600 on there. Great. We'll see if 600 millimeters will do it. If not, we can just go for a wider shot. But I wanna see if I can crop in just a smidge on what's going on. There we go. All right, so we're framed in quite a bit tighter there's more fog rolling in now, and I'm just gonna barely get some of the horizon just to give us some indication and kind of ground us where we're at. But what I really like about this area is there's a lot of depth from our lighter green tree in the foreground. So we have, we have some light that's kind of flowing through, even though it's really even. Uh, we're gonna use some filtration to accentuate things a bit more. One of my go-to filters for this type of shots is a blue filter. The blue filter is going to help accentuate our fog even more than it already naturally appears, but it's also going to severely prolong our exposure by the tune of about three and a half stops. So you got to have a sturdy tripod and you got to be ready for a long exposure, but it's usually worth it. One filter adapter ring. This is so we can put our filter holder on our lens. Great, lock that down. Our filter holder, drop that on. There we go. Let's get our loop and work out a composition. I'm gonna be able to get a good amount of foreground while not completely losing ourselves in the background. Yeah, maybe our horizon doesn't need to show up. Yeah, I'll try a glint of it and then I'll back it off a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Our working aperture for this shot is 22 and a half. I'm probably just gonna make it, we'll make it 32. So I am gonna aim for something that's gonna give me F32 filtered through. So next step, we're gonna meter this out 
If you're using a filter, the easiest way to do that is just place your filter right on top. With a spot meter, it's super easy. With the dome style meter, it might be harder. You may have to tuck the dome in if you can or kind of shade other ambient light from coming in. But we'll just drop our filter right on top here. And again, what the blue is gonna do is it's going to accentuate any fog, water, or blue sky. It's gonna really, really make those uh, blown out. And it's gonna give us some separation to our other values, namely our greens and our yellows and oranges that are going on. So we're using HP 5 Plus today. In the Pyrocat HD developer I use, that's going to give me ISO 200 instead of 400. So I'm gonna meter it at ISO 200 through this to try and get me near that F32 mark that I wanna be at. So we'll pop it through, find some highlights, and no surprises there. Our exposure is super, super uh, delicate through there. So we're gonna have to bump up our exposure quite a bit. My metered exposure to get me where my middle values are at 32 for my exposure, we're at eight seconds. That's eight seconds of metered exposure, which means I'm actually gonna be closer to a minute worth of exposure, which is gonna play in my favor with all of this fog. We're gonna check everything's locked down. We're gonna drop our filter on and load up some sheets. All right, drop that all the way on there. Working aperture, close the lens, cock the lens. Let's get a really slow shutter speed. I brought 10 sheets of film today because the last time I came here to Clear Fort Gorge, I didn't bring enough film. I only brought like six shots and I ran out super duper quick. So we're gonna play around with our composition a little bit, really try to get the fog we're looking for. The only really challenge with this is I'm here at sunrise and that sun is rising rapidly. So my exposure is gonna be changing every few minutes. So instead of that initial metered one minute time, I might actually just count it off at 30 seconds. The more that fog rolls around, the more this is gonna give us a dreamlike exposure. All right, we're gonna do one more and then we're gonna to switch to something wide angle. With these 30 second exposures, it's really critical, especially because I'm using my longer lens on here. You can't have any shake whatsoever. No bumping the tripod, no using a stubby cable release. You really have to make sure that everything is locked down. A long lens is gonna magnify every single thing you do. Final 10 seconds. I just love this fog. It's kind of snaking through. Mohican never disappoints. Lock it, pull it, bag it. And it can't just be a one trick pony. It can't just be about the fog. You gotta find some other nice light. I'm a sucker for backlight. So the sunrise is coming in this direction. It's streaming in from behind. There's a lot of depth here. And we have this cool little bit of uh, moss overgrowth and some ivy on these trees. And they're distance enough that I can get some really nice separation between them in the background, so I'm gonna see if I can keep a pretty wide open exposure to emphasize that depth and that texture. Now there is so little contrast going on here. It's a relatively flat exposure. I fully anticipate shooting without a filter and having still somewhere in the neighborhood of two to four seconds of exposure time. Okay. All right, finding my shadows, finding those little glinty highlights. And I'm trying to find my shadows at f11. So there we go, metered exposure two seconds, which will leave my total exposure four seconds. All right. 
Let's head back to the other gorge overlook. You ever just have one of those days where you're seeing really long? The 600's my lens today. It's just a little bit longer than what I'm used to uh, shooting with this 8x10, but that's why I brought it. It sometimes works. So I'm going to try for one more photograph today. One similar in composition to one I had attempted before. I think last time I was a little too close with it and I want to attempt a bit wider. Even though I mentioned I'm seeing long today, I think this shot will look better a little wider. So I'm going to take the longer lens off and change to my, my 150. That should be good. So one technique I'm going to use for this photograph, I'm really focusing on uh, the gnarled trees that are kind of growing out of the rock and the direction that they're pushing toward the gorge. But at the same time, I'm including a little bit of the fog from the background here and some of this streaming sunrise that's coming in and giving texture to these. Wide angle lenses, even this really well corrected wide angle, will have a little bit of vignette on the sides just due to the nature of that field of view. And I'm going to use that to my advantage here. I'm placing the brightest highlights, which is that backlit sky as well as some of that fog on the extreme edge of the frame as well as some of that sunrise on the frame. So that vignette will actually even out my exposure a little bit. It's still going to be backlit. We're not changing that, but we're aiding our own composition using what we know about our lens. All right, let's close down to our working aperture. Oops, there we go. Right there, and that's showing us at f32. Nice. Close the lens. Handy dandy meter. Let's see. All right, highlights. Wow, really nice and bright. Shadows. Some midtones some bright greens, and we have a really, really bright dynamic range here. I'm supposed to wake up. So to find our shadows on 32, two seconds, so a total of four. Good. And I may do two of this one. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four. So I came back to the overlook because the sun's streaming in and there's a hint more fog, but I'm also getting this lovely sunrise light kind of raking through and giving me more texture and opening things up. And what I'm going to do to try to get that contrast uh, to pop a little bit more and not have too flat a scene, my metered exposure time is two seconds, giving me a reciprocity exposure of four seconds. But because my dynamic range is only about two stops across with how tight I am on the scene, what I'm going to do to expand that a little bit is I'm actually only going to give it two seconds of exposure and I'm also going to push my development a little bit. So an N plus one development. So that's going to take my contrast. I'm giving it a little bit of underexposure and then I'm expanding it out. So 
So my last two shots didn't make it into the video. It was one of those, I'm just driving by the dam and there was some really neat light kind of streaking in and the fog was still coming up off the water. So I ended up making two shots of the dam, one with my 355, my standard lens, and another one with my 250. So just a few kind of steps back from that first shot, but I really like what it ended up doing, played nicely with the little buoys in the river and just had some cool lines going on. And if you zoom into one of them, you can see there was a whole slew of turkey vultures at the very, very top of the, the dam tower. That was kind of cool. I know I'm a broken record at this point, but one of my favorite things to do is get up early in the morning, expose a bunch of film, get out there, hike in the process, go back into the darkroom, develop the film by hand. It's a start to finish thing that I'm very involved in. In some parts it's a workout, other parts it can be stressful but it's something very handmade at the end of the day. It's one of my favorite parts of it. What do you do for meditation? Do you shoot your camera too? What aspect of it? Is it the process? Is it the post-production? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you have any questions about this or anything large format, you can always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll catch you next time for more LFF.